Hey guys, here's another quick update on a few more modifications I've made to this Perusa i3 3D printer. Let's get stuck into it. This modification I've been using for a while now and it's to do with the Z-axis threaded rod and how it attaches to the X-axis uh, end motor mount and also to the X-axis idler. We have one M5 hex nut uh, located within this uh, nut trap of this part here. Because there's only one nut making contact on the threaded rod, there's a possibility for backlash to occur. That's where the, the nut isn't, isn't making contact with the thread um, along its, its center. So one method the community uses to alleviate that issue is to have uh, two nuts uh, suspended uh, with a spring in the center to create uh, a tension or a force so the bottom nut is always pushing down along those threads and this other nut is always pushing up along those threads. Uh, and simply uh, this particular plastic part here covers uh, this particular setup. So I have, I have one here. So this part that I've designed um, simply has the shape of the M5 nut which will clip in quite nicely into the nut trap compartment here and also to the uh, the idler side and what this allows you to do and underneath sorry we also have uh, the, the shape of a hex nut for the for the nuts to slide in without rotating uh, and what we do here is uh, we simply slide that on make sure the the flat surfaces of the of the nuts are facing the same way slide that on it is a quite a tight fit which is exactly what you want slide that in click and there we go uh, now there is absolutely no play in this part. You can, you can turn this by hand and it seems to have a consistent uh, rotation to it and I find this uh, to be a, a fantastic and, and quite simple um, remedy to having just a single nut there which may um, experience a bit of backlash. So I have that on both this side and the other side. And here we are on the other end of the x-axis. This is the x-axis and idler with belt tensioner. This item is available to download on Thingiverse. I'll include the link below. This part is compatible with the Prusa i3 uh, rework kit. It comes in two parts. The first part being the actual X end idler itself and the second part being the roller puller. The roller puller simply slots in uh, from the front. Uh, you attach a screw with quite a long thread onto that. That thread uh, uh, sticks out the other end of the idler which then allows you to attach a nut to then uh, tighten and pull the roller back toward you. Uh, as, as you can definitely tell uh, this part is very useful because you're able to tighten the, uh, the belt on the x-axis which we aren't able to do with the stock Prusa i3 rework end idler so I recommend this one too. If you have the roller filament attached to the side of your 3D printer, similar to what I have here, chances are you may have experienced the filament springing off the roll during a print. One way to fix this is to constrain the filament through a filament guide. So this is just another design I've quickly whipped up and printed, which works extremely well, easy to install. Simply uh, attach it to an existing screw hole of the nearest stepper motor. I've sandwiched a piece of EPP packing foam uh, between the Y-axis carriage and the uh, print surface. The reason I've done this is to try to alleviate the phenomenon uh, known as ghosting or waves or ripple. Uh, they're all descriptive words to describe um, an artifact that appears on the surface, the finished surface of your printed object, which shows uh, a rippling effect from a previous sharp turn. And this occurs when one of these axes comes to an abrupt stop, the axis is actually oscillating or, or decayingly oscillating on the spot while the other axis continues to move. That decaying oscillation is then imprinted onto your 3D printed object. Um, so with the heat bed, all this simply is, is a, uh, a flat surface suspended by four screws under tension by these springs. So one thing I've noticed here is when the y-axis, for example, comes to an abrupt stop, because it's basically up on stilts, it's likely oscillating back and forth on these, um, on these springs. 
So just something that I'm testing with and playing around with is this, uh, this EPP uh, packing foam that I've sandwiched between the Y-axis carriage and the heat bed. And initial results look quite good. It hasn't totally um, fixed or mitigated the, that ghosting effect, but it has certainly um, made an impact. And I'll place some photos of two objects that I've, that I've printed just to show the before and after shots of them now. So this is still a work in progress. Hopefully I'll find a more permanent solution rather than just this packing foam as with PLA, it's not an issue of course, but I'm not sure if this is gonna withstand the temperatures of the, uh, the ABS when I print at 100 degrees. So that's the status update for my 3D printer. Um, there's a few interesting items on Thingiverse I've been meaning to download and print, so I might just get stuck into those over the next few days. I'll be sure to upload a video, so stick around for that. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments down below, and I'll catch you next time.